peace in from the black holes of Dakota Toritary. United States of Advertising, Stan Gibalisco here. Uh, this is less of a ham radio versus Arduino issue. It's just a very interesting technical uh, question from the same viewer who asked me if I was involved with the Arduino at all. This question involves listening to ultrasound. Uh, well, that's the way I interpreted it. Her um, specific question had to do with uh, how could you listen to the sounds of insects from a distance? Well, they used to have a thing called the big ear, which was basically a long-distance uh, amplifier with a microphone uh, at the focal point of a parabolic dish, probably about three feet in diameter or one meter in diameter. Um, you can use a similar arrangement to listen to the sounds of insects. Keep in mind, though, that nature has a lot of sounds that extend beyond the range of human hearing. And if you just use something as simple as a so-called big ear, you're going to hear the audible frequency sounds, roughly 20 to, uh, hertz to 20 kilohertz, but you're not going to hear those ultrasound uh, waves that come in above 20 kilohertz or so. However, I thought up a very interesting idea, um, and that is to uh, take a VLF, very low frequency, radio receiving converter. Now those uh, converters generally comprise crystal oscillators and mixers, uh, and then you modulate that oscillator with uh, the input from the radio antenna. And when you do that, you get sidebands on either side of the crystal frequency up to, uh, well, at, at very low frequency, it would be 30 kilohertz and below, uh, although it can extend in some cases up to 40 or 50 kilohertz. I've made a few videos about how I did that with a old Drake T4X R4A combination plugged my 20-meter vertical antenna into the microphone jack of the T4X, set the T4X in A um, in spot mode for AM, and uh, then the incoming uh, energy from the antenna modulated that AM wave, and I could pick it up with the R4A by tuning to either side of the carrier. And a lot of very low-frequency converters operate according to that same principle. Well... Suppose that instead of an antenna, like the 20 meter of vertical, I had plugged a sensitive uh, parabolic uh, sound receiving device, an ultrasound receiving device with a transducer at the focal point that would convert sound and ultrasound into electrical impulses, and then plugged that into the microphone jack of the T4X. Then I would, in, in effect, have a sound and ultrasound receiver that you could select the frequencies with by tuning the R4A receiver either side of that AM carrier. And you'd get similar results for, uh, for VLF uh, radio frequency, except it would be audio frequency. Then you could hear, quote-unquote, sounds above the normal range of human hearing. And I believe a lot of insects can hear sounds uh, above that range, implying very strongly that they can also, therefore, make sounds above that range. Uh, she was not particularly concerned with identifying the insects themselves by their sounds, as just listening to them from a distance. And that is what I would recommend trying. Uh, that said, I have communicated two-way by means of ultrasonic waves using two devices similar to the one I just described. And one thing that will occur over any distance, with ultrasound particularly, is that the turbulence in the air will cause a lot of um, modulation or phase modulation of the incoming audio signal. So you're going to get a sound that's very similar to what you hear with uh, auroral propagation in ham radio. Uh, in other words, it's not just going to be a steady 
sound that comes in, it's going to be modulated, uh, uh, particularly amplitude modulated, so that it kind of, kind of warbles. Uh, I'm not sure exactly what the word is, it, but it fluctuates in intensity. But you should be able to listen to uh, sounds, and I put listen, quote unquote, to sounds and ultrasounds uh, well beyond the range of hu uh, human hearing with a VLF converter connected to an ordinary ham radio receiver, but instead of the antenna at the input of the VLF converter, you connect this transducer with a parabolic dish. I could draw a diagram of that for you, but I think you can probably pretty well figure out what I'm talking about without the need for a diagram. Moreover, I've been kind of into selfies lately. Have you noticed that? The main, my excuse for that is not because I think my face is so beautiful and I like to watch my face move on YouTube. The, although that is, uh, no it's not. I, I have no clue. Do you think my face is beautiful? Oh, forget it, forget it. <clears throat> That's not the point of this video anyway. The point of this video is to describe the circuit in uh, using a video mode that I find easy to do. I just set my iPad down, plug in a microphone to it, hang that microphone around my head. That's what this necklace is that you see in some of these videos. And then yammer away! And uh, then I just upload it, process it on YouTube, download it, archive it, and that's that. I'm not sure which playlist I'm going to put this video in because it doesn't really have to do with ham radio like the other one did to a greater extent. Probably electricity and electronics sampler. That'll probably be the, the uh, playlist I put this in. But uh, in any case, I hope that that gives you some ideas. Just get an ordinary, very low frequency ham radio uh, or shortwave or general radio receiver converter. The, get the receiver. Hook it up just like you were going to listen to VLF on it, but then, instead of the antenna, plug in that transducer. Ultrasonic transducers, by the way, that produce ultrasound can also pick up ultrasound just like an ultrasonic microphone can. In fact, that's what they are. They're sort of a, a dual-purpose device, but you have to get a good one. Uh, and uh, it has to be properly constructed and all of that. And I'll leave that up to you, the viewer, to design. I'm not going to do all your work for you. It's work enough for me to sit here and blabber away into this iPad. Stan Jibalisco signing off from the black holes. Once again, peace out. And a little bit of a shift in the aim of that iPad. Until next time, so long.